Hi, welcome back to Christine's Home Affairs. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make my supermarket shopping bags. I've made well over three and a half thousand of these so far, and I thought it was time that I show you how I go and mass produce my bags. These are by far the best sellers that I've ever had in the shop. I've been making them for almost four years and I'm going to go through with you the processes that I go through in making batches. So we'll go to the cutting of the fabric, the strapping for the handles, how I batch sew everything and just the time-saving techniques that I use to make these bags. This is one of the bags that I've just finished these ones are made with the upholstery fabric that I got in that batch just before Christmas with those 40 odd rolls of fabric that you would have seen me pick up. Come along and we will go into the studio and I'll show you how to cut the how I cut the fabric up. Then we'll go and start assembling the bag. I'll grab a new piece of fabric for myself, unravel the whole roll. And when I'm doing lots of bags, I like to make markers on the work surface that I'm working on. So these bags here, because they're one yard wide or 90 centimetres wide, I've made a mark on my table at 90 centimetres and I've also made a mark at 45 centimetres or that is half a yard. And the reason I do that is because sometimes I don't get a full amount out of the fabric. It just means it's easier for me to cut things up. So I'll take my measurement just take a snip out of the fabric and then I'll line it up on my table nice and straight and cut straight across. And I like to line up the straight edges of the fabric on the straight edge of the table as well. And that helps me keep this line nice and straight. And I cut in front of me. Now this fabric is at least one and a half meters wide or 60 inches. So I'm just bringing the two salvages together, fold that in half, and then I'm going to fold that in half again. And what will happen when I cut this fabric out, I'm going to make piles of it and I'm going to cut it out all at once. I'll be able to cut a half of a bag here on the fold and then the other bag here, and I can do it in layers and that'll give me two bags here and one bag here so I can cut them out a lot quicker. And this one's not wide enough to do a whole run, so I can make one bag out of this. I'll line it up at the halfway mark and do the same thing just with the cut. So when I cut this, I'm not actually taking a bite out of the fabric. I'm running the bottom of my scissors along the table and all I'm doing is just sliding it along without actually moving the blade but you need sharp scissors for that. So I'll set this one aside. That'll be handy in cosmetic bags or little toiletry bags. And this piece here, I need to cut that one down to the one yard or 90 centimetres, but I'll do that in a batch later. When I'm ready to start cutting up a big pile of fabric, I'll just lay these on top of each other. I've got my electric cutter just here and I'll place as many of these as I can over the top of each other, lining them up perfectly along the folded edge here. So this is a folded edge here and then I've got a fold along here. I want the fold on my left hand side because this is going to be the size of half a bag. I usually keep one bag as a template. So this fabric here is the size for a bag that I'll be doing. And rather than drawing a whole heap of lines over and over again and measuring constantly, I'll take this bag piece and fold it in half and place that fold on this fold here. So what I'm doing is cutting out one bag section out of here, which is on the fold. Then I'll take my electric cutter and place that over the folded edge of the fabric here, line it up along here. Now I don't want to run over this, the template. 
So I'll make my cut and turn this off again straight away. Safety first. And now that I've cut a half section, when you open this out, there's one whole bag piece done. So this is just for the ends of the fabric where the fold is. You'll usually only get one bag out of each of the folds. But on this one here, I've got two sections and each one of those will give me two bags. So a one yard piece of fabric that is 60 inches wide is going to give me three bags. So now I'll have my bag opened out fully, place that over the top and do exactly the same thing. Make sure your fingers are out of the way. So that was my template and then I've got my bags cut out and I've actually got two cut out here because of the fold in the fabric that I did earlier. So I'll keep my template for the next slot. I usually just do a whole big batch of fabric and then I'll, so I'll do it in stages. I'll unravel a few rolls, cut them all up, get my sheets, have them folded, place them on top of each other in piles of two or three, and then cut them all out at once. Once I've cut up all the pieces of fabric that I want to, I will go to the next step, which is the uh, strapping for the handles. All right, the only things we need to do this project are a piece of fabric and some strapping or fabric for your handles. Now, if you're sewing to sell, you'll want to put some labels on as well. Even if you're going to gift these to somebody, it'll look nice with a label on them. My label says Handmade in Nagambi, which is the town that I live in. Stitch This is the name of my shop. And then I've got my website at the bottom there so that if anybody uh, sees my bags whilst the owner is out and about in the street, they can just be directed to that website or if the customer that has it wants more, they can purchase more as well on my website. So that's what's on my labels. What you need is some fabric for your handles. I'm going to be using polypropylene webbing here and I use this because it's much easier to have lots and lots of strapping cut to size so that I can do hundreds of bags at a time. It's much quicker than making up the handles each time. If you're using webbing you need a one inch wide that is 44 inches long or 110 centimeters and cut that in half to make two. Now if you want to make your own handles out of your fabric cut the width of fabric it's usually 44 inches then cut up a strip that is four inches in width. So there's no hard and fast rule about the length of your handles, but it's easier if you just use what's on your fabric width. Take your four inches, fold it in half, and then fold the raw edges in, and then fold it again, stitch down both long edges. Now, if you don't have a serger or an overlocker, so in Australia, we call sergers overlockers. Uh, if you don't have one of those, and you don't want to zigzag your edges, fold the edge of your handle just quarter of an inch before you actually fold the rest of your handle. Then you've got a nice neat edge here. We can stitch onto our bags later. So you just want to stitch down the long edges. You don't need to stitch the short edges because you'll be stitching that in place when you put it onto your bag. Okay, that brings us to our fabric. So what we need in width, you need double in length. That's the easiest way to work out uh, what size fabric you need to make your bag. So you can make a shorter bag. You can make it a little bit narrower if you want to, but you make it whatever width you have to get the length, you double that. So that's it. That's just a simple way of working it out. These supermarket shopping bags, which are a copy of the uh, supermarket shopping bags that they use at the stores. This is 18 inches wide or 45 centimeters. The length of the fabric is 36 inches long or 90 centimetres long. Now to put our handles on, take your fabric with the short side, fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And you would have seen me do this in my most recent video, doing a lined version of these bags. So I folded it in half and then folded that in half again. And then I've just taken a pin, mark that the first fold is here and we've got a pin in the center of that. Place another pin on this side of the fabric and there we have the position of our handles. So we've got the center there and the handle is in the center of that. 
grab the other end of your fabric, bring that up to meet. If your fabric is a little bit wide, I'll actually just center that so that it's even on both sides. It'll be fixed up when you actually sew the side seams down. Pop a pin in the same position and that's where our handles are going on both ends of the bag. Once you've got your prepared handle or your strapping ready, so these are now 22 inches long, pop it over directly over the center of the pin there. Make sure your handle is nice and flat and repeat for the other side. And we can take this to the machine now and start sewing the bag together. So in about eight minutes, you can have this bag finished. If you don't have an overlocker or a serger, go to your normal sewing machine. You'll zigzag the short edges at both ends. Once you've done that, bring the bags right side together and you'll stitch all the way down on both long edges there and then go and do a zigzag with your machine. I'm going to take this to the overlocker now and I'll show you how I do these all in one go. So I'll, I'll overlock or serge the short edges. I won't even cut my thread. I'll go straight to the fold and stitch straight down the edge there and then I'll do the other side. So it's very, very quick. After I've done that, it can go to the domestic sewing machine. Then the rest of the bag can be made up. So if you're going to make a whole big batch of bags, I'm going to show you what time-saving techniques I use to make these bags in bulk. Now, because I'm using lots and lots of strapping, I buy 50 meter rolls at a time and I usually buy about 10 of these rolls a year. I've made myself a little template. So this is my strapping template. Um, it's just a cardboard box that is the correct length all the way around for the handle for one side of the bag. So I'll take my strapping. I've sealed the box up on all sides except for one. I take my strapping and I just poke a small section of that into the box. You can tape it if you want to. So place the strapping over the open section of your box. I've also made a little mark here that tells me where my start position is. And I've got an end position here as well so that I know which side of the box I'm actually cutting from because once it's wrapped, you can't see. Wrap this webbing around the box until there's no box left. And you can use just a board, uh, a box. This box was what I had that suited me perfectly. Once you get to the end of your box, find the end, hold the webbing down or the strapping down. And this is the side where I've actually left the box open. So my scissors can fit inside the box and then I can just start cutting along. then you can see that all of my handles are the same size. So that's how I cut my handles in bulk. I like templates for all my batch sewing. This is what I do when I'm going to put a whole heap of handles onto my bags. Once you've got all your handles pre-cut, take your fabric and get a spare piece of fabric or a piece of paper the same width as your fabric. And what I've done here is just got some fabric here and I've taped that down to my board. What I've also done is drawn a line to coincide with my pins. So where my pins are here, I've marked a line on the fabric and that's position of my handles. I've taped this down and that can stay here whilst I go and do the rest of my bags. I usually have all my strapping sitting at the top of the table, ready to go line up my fabric on top. Now, if your fabric is a little bit bigger or smaller, it really doesn't matter. As long as you have it even an equal distance from the edges, line it up and then you can just put your handles on. Turn it around and do the same for the other side. I have everything lined up in front of me. I have my pin cushion ready. I have my st strapping in place. I have my fabric beside me. And I have my template down here and I, it's just a matter of grabbing a handle, pinning, and I can do everything really quickly and repeat for the other side. I'll set each bag aside and I'll just continue on like this until I've finished with all of the strapping or until I've run out of fabric or until I get sick of the whole process. So using your overlocker or serger, I'm going to secure the handles down at both ends. 
And without finishing my work, I'm going to leave it faced up and take the other end of my bag, do the top section as well. Here I'll leave a nice long tail, but I'm not going to cut this off. I'll take the open edge, bring that to the top here. So these tails will be cut off when I place the fabric underneath. Raise your foot. If you don't raise your foot, then the top layer of fabric will shift. And just line up the edges and stitch all the way to the end. You can cut this tail off, turn around and continue with this side. Now that the overlocking has been done on all of the bags, I'm ready now to do the boxing on the corner of the bags. We've got our bags inside out, stitching's all done on the side there, and we now need to box our corners. Now you can go and measure three and a half inches from the outside edge. Just do it from the outside edge there. I've placed a mark there at three and a half inches. And if you open that bag out, put your hand inside, Fan it open, you've got the side seam along the centre there and you're starting to make a triangle point. Now you can go and get a ruler now and just draw a straight line straight across. What I've done is drawn a straight line from this side to this side. Unfortunately just used white chalk so you can't really see it. But there is a line going straight across here. So if you're doing only one or two of these you can go and mark your three and a half inches and just draw a line straight across and then stitch them down. When you are marking this, just make sure that you have this seam here going down the center of the bag. What I like to do so that I know where the center is, I usually have a crayon. This is actually a leather marking crayon. So you can see that black line just there. That's the center bottom of the bag. And as long as I match that line up with this seam on this side, then I'm going to have a nice straight line going across here. So measure three and a half inches from the corner. You can draw your line if you want to. If you want to do a mass production like I've been showing you, I'll get a ruler or a piece of ribbon, anything at all, to be able to create a straight line on the bed of my machine. What I've done is taken my three and a half inch measurement and I've measured that from the point of the needle. So where the needle goes down, I've measured three and a half inches straight across, and this is the guide of my fabric. I've got a piece of plastic here. Often I'll use just a ribbon, anything that's a contrast to the bed of the machine. It, when you sew the corners of your bag, you can use that as a guide just to go straight along. That way you don't have to go and measure every single bag. Now that I've got my guide here, I'm ready to do the boxing of my bags. So I've got the fold on the bottom here, and I'll just make a little mark at the bottom there. That's the center that needs to match up with the side seam of my bag. So put your hand in, open it out. There's the line that I've drawn and there's my side seam. Place that over the top. When I'm stitching across here, I'll have this seam here facing away from me. And there's a reason for that. I'll explain that on the next step. So line up your chalk mark or your line with your side seam and place it straight under the machine, nice and flat. And this edge here, the corner, will just go right along the edge of that guide that I've made. Start sewing at the top there, back stitch. I do like to back stitch over the seam here. I'm not actually watching this section at whilst I'm sewing. I'm watching this guide here. I'm making sure that this fabric here stays nice and straight. Then you've got a nice straight stitch across the bottom. When I'm making these shopping bags, I'll actually leave my ears on. I've not had a single customer complain about that. It just gives it a little bit more structure and stability leaving those on. And one less step because we don't have to finish the edges. Repeat for the other side. And there's my other seam done. Now remember these little tails, I said not to chop them off. I may, may have said not to chop them off, is instead of cutting them off here, I like to just tuck them over. I've stitched that down. That way the overlocking is never going to unravel and I don't have to worry about tying all my th overlocking threads in. So now I'll just set this bag aside, do all of the rest exactly the same way. Mark the bottoms, fold the corners, sew them, 
tidy up the threads on the corner and then go to the next one. I've got the corners done on all of my bags. I'll now go and turn all of them through at the same time. It's so much quicker to do this than grab each bag. At this time, at this point, I'll just poke the corners out, make sure that sits nice and flat. Now we're ready to turn the top of the bag over. You can see I've got the overlocked or surged edges along here and that's got my handle in place. This step I usually do by sight rather than measuring. But again, if you're only doing a couple or you're uncertain as to how to do these, remember earlier I said when you're sewing the box corner to have the seam facing away from you. And the reason that I wanted to do that is because when I now sew this seam down, I've got that folded over and I can just push that seam toward me as I'm sewing. Just make the job a little bit quicker. So go and fold your edges over one inch or two and a half centimeters. I don't cut these tails off unless they're a little bit long. I just fold the fabric over and tuck that thread underneath and that gets stitched in as you're sewing the top of your bag. So go and mark one inch from the fold down and you can pin or clip that in place all the way around. I don't bother with this step because I'll just fold them over and stitch all the way around very, very quickly. So what we're going to do from here, starting off from the side seam here, we'll start on the edge there with a back stitch come all the way around the entire bag when you get to the handle go over back and over again so you've done that three times it's also been reinforced with the overlocking threads that you've got on here so you just go one two and three keep on going to the next handle do the same thing until you get all the way around back to the beginning once you've got to the beginning don't cut your threads stitch up along the seam here and then we're going to do a narrow top stitch along the top edge on the handles we'll repeat what we did down here we'll go over back and over again continue all the way around until you get back to the beginning and then you can cut your thread off it's much quicker just to stay on the bag sew all the way around stitch up sew all the way around again very very quick this way because you're reinforcing your handles three times along the bottom and along the top there's no need for you to go and do that cross along the handles it's just extra time When you get to seams, if you've got any loose threads hanging out, just tuck them in underneath. I'm back at the beginning now. Just raise your foot, come up along that seam and then continue to stitch. And there is our bag completely finished. We've got a double row of stitching right along the very top there. The handles are very well secured. They're not going to go anywhere. Now what I'll do is I'll just take the next one, fold it over just by sight, stitch all the way around, do the whole batch. And after that, if you sew to sell or you just want to have a nice label on them, I'll find the center and put the label on in the middle there. With all my bags finished, the last thing I need to do is put my labels on. What I'll do here is I just fold this in half, find the center point, place my label directly over the top of that. I use sewing labels because I don't trust the iron-on labels. Uh, I don't know why. I've not had any negative experience. It's just what I've always done. Once that one's done, I just go straight on to the next one. And that's it. All my bags are completely finished. So there you go. What did you think? In the past couple of weeks, I've done about 50 to 60 bags. I've just finished this lot this morning. So what I do when I make these bags, I don't just sit there and make 60 odd bags at a time. Quite often I'll cut out enough fabric to do 100 bags or thereabouts. I'll have a whole range of colors ready. All the fabric will be cut. Whenever I get the urge next time to make another batch, I'll do that. Or I'll just make these in the shop in between my alterations and customer sales. These are the finished ones today. They come up really well. I just keep a whole batch of them sitting 
on the shelves. I keep two of each colour hanging up out the front. You might wonder why when I was overlocking these, why did I do the top edges first and not overlock the side edges and then just serge all the way around the top? I've tried both ways. If I overlock the side seams first and then come around and do the top of the bag with the handles attached to them, it takes me two minutes and about 40 seconds. So two minutes 40. If I do these by sewing the top edge edges first and then sew the side seams it takes me under two minutes if you're making hundreds of bags of these a year you're saving lots of time it's more bags you can get made it takes me just under nine minutes to make one bag these are a really good income earner for me given that I don't charge for the fabric I charge for my time and anything that I do actually purchase so say even if it took me 10 minutes per bag I could get six of these made in an hour I charge $15 per bag for any of the plain ones that I've got and $20 per bag for the printed ones. The reason I do that is because I don't have as much printed fabric uh, and some of these colors are really nice. I don't want them to sell straight away. So I only just started doing that with this latest batch, $20 per bag for the printed, $15 per bag for all of the other ones and any older stocked fabric that I have. So if I was only making one of these every 10 minutes, that's six bags an hour, at $15, that's $90 worth of bags I can make in an hour. And bonus when I sell the $20 ones, which I've actually sold quite a few since I've been making these ones uh, just before Christmas. I hope you've enjoyed this video and the techniques that I use to make the job go a whole lot quicker for me. If you can think of anything that will make the job go even quicker for me, let me know because I'm always up for uh, time management. Oh, and by the way, it's mine. So for those of you that have seen the latest video I did on uh, the review for this particular machine, we've worked out a deal and it's officially mine. So thanks everyone for your support and your great comments. I'm sure it helped me uh, keep this machine. Time for me to go and find another project and I shall catch you next time. Bye for now.